ंग series Bracewell is leading uh, leading the New Zealand side although there's been a bit of skepticism that you know New Zealand is not carrying the traditional strength it's used to but then again it gives you the opportunity to try some new combinations as well doesn't it but that in Pakistan obviously is something that we still need to see how we approach uh, a series as well Babar Azam is back as skipper for Pakistan again his first assignment uh when you talk about coming back as the captain so it's going to be very interesting the team management has also been announced including Azhar Mahmood as the head coach Mohammad Yusuf is there as well uh, Said Ajmal is also part of that uh, team so i think a lot is to be discussed on the show in detail so we'll discuss everything because it's five match t20 international series and enough practice with you've got games uh, in uh, Pindi cricket stadium as well they officially start from there so we will be talking about all the conditions as well in detail time now to introduce the guests first of all in studios we've been joined by cricket commentator mm. international broadcaster presenter and our sports expert ki asif ahmed assalam alaikum how are you sir wa alaikum assalam ahmed i'm very well thank you great to have you on the show we've also been joined by sports expert uh, somebody who will be analyzing the game as well it's been a while uh, since we got hold of him but finally i think we've been lucky enough uh, blessed that he is finally back on the show mr malik usman joins us assalam alaikum how are you sir wa alaikum assalam and the previous seed mubarak to all of you <laughs> we're great to have you back as well uh, i think uh, business as usual when we discuss cricket uh, usman uh, first of all i think the first thing that we need to uh, really discuss is that uh, pakistan cricket board has approached things very smartly under the new chairman mr mohsin nakvi i haven't had a chance to discuss this with you but looks like that you know those clouds of uncertainty seem to be settling down now and there seems to be a structured approach as far as all matters regarding the cricket team are concerned i think there is nothing surprising about it uh, we used to discuss about mr mohsin nakvi that once he takes charge i think things are going to be very different and it is going to go very smoothly and probably in a direction or two you may question one or two things but you will see something that uh, a person with a very clear idea and very clear direction is going to take forward i have spoken to a couple of people around him and he told they told me that he has a plan for 2 years he's it's not just that he has taken over and is enjoying the post he has the plan to take pcb and pakistan cricket to a place in 2 years which he has uh, he has a castle in his mind itself mm. so i think he's going and uh, approaching uh, that direction with his approach and with his clear mind and uh, i think uh, things are going to go smoothly from the very beginning until the very end and let's hope it goes that way because for the past few months uh, or one of one and a half year we had had three four chairmen and uh, that did not benefit the pakistan cricket by any means and we had chopping and changing in the cricket team and we did not have a good 50 over world cup as well and there were the things were so uncertain that uh, some of the fans actually were doing away with this cricket matches as well but i think once the approach uh, positive approach returns and there is a clarity in the ideas and clarity in the directions i think uh, they can bring the fans back as well and a good uh, performance or two from the pakistan cricket team is go- not going to do any harm to their well being in the future as well but well, asif how, how do you approach <coughs> this cricket wise as well because you know like i said that there's a lot of skepticism about this new zealand side but you know teams like new zealand england even australia to a fact don't uh, shy down from trying new combinations they're eventually preparing for the future and trying some prospects who can make up for that world cup squad how do you think pakistan should be approaching this series well i think that a lot to discuss about the pakistan cricket and uh, uh, some positivity of course that and i have observed that the college cricket first time in the history of the pakistan cricket that uh, been broadcasted live over the PTV Pakistan Television or PTV Sports and uh, I was the part of the uh, commentary panel so I think I enjoyed a lot and the good thing is that uh, the enthusiasm in the youth about cricket now of course that when you are uh, uh, putting each and everything on the social media and uh, give them chance to perform live and people are watching you world is watching you I think that's a positive thing from the Pakistan cricket board and of course credit goes to Mohsin Nakvi Uh, about the two years plan or the three years plan and the uncertainty each and everything now gone and uh, Mohsin Nakvi is quite sure about his plans 
Uh, but one thing is uh, really need to be discussed. That's the narrow approach from Pakistan Cricket Board. Um, yeah, Australia, India, especially India and Australia, if you see their structure, uh, you will find that they, they give opportunities to the new players. Either it's a bilateral series, either it's even the Asia Cup and the big tournaments. They don't rely that uh, what's going on with the you know prior players, the main players like Virat Kohli, mm -hmm. Rohit Sharma, Jasprit Bumrah, or the Shami, or some other players. Uh, and, and and that's why they have a very strong side. And if you see T20 cricket, either ODI cricket or the Test cricket, they're ruling on the over the world. And Pakistan. Unluckily, unfortunately, that we're not taking that steps. And still, uh, we were hoping something better from uh, Wahab Raz and company. But I think that the, the same approach from the uh, new selection committee, that uh, they didn't g give chance to the new players. Only a couple of players. Let me uh, take their names, mm -hmm. Usman Khan and Niazi. But both of them, Usman Khan didn't play first-class cricket for so long in Pakistan. He was playing in the UAE and he was a part of the UAE's plans. And that's why they put a ban on uh, Usman Khan for the next five years. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, they were thinking to give chance uh, to, to, to Usman Khan in their national side. Niazi, if you see his uh, first-class career, I think that uh, you won't find a big list. And uh, the vice versa, if I have seen the... Uh, Hasibullah, the averaging 40, mm -hmm. uh, 38 to 43 in first class cricket. And uh, if he's not in your plans, if he's not in the side, then where is your positive approach? Uh, I, I think longevity is, is the real question for these players as well. And how frequently are you going to give them chances? If you're just <laughs> going to bench them, I think that's going to be a disaster once again. But that being said, we've got a report on the visiting New Zealand team and their series in Pakistan. Let's take a look at that and then continue the discussion. Pakistan will face New Zealand in a five-match T20 international series on home soil. The two teams will play their three T20 internationals in Pindi Cricket Stadium in Rawalpindi on the 18th, 20th and the 21st of April. Both sides will move to Lahore where they will then play the remaining two T20s of the series on 25th and 27th of April. Pacer Mohammad Amir and all-rounder Imad Wasim, who recently reversed their retirement have made a comeback into the Pakistani squad which will be led by Babar Azam for this series. Irfan Khan and Usman Khan have got the nod of the selectors after impressive performances in the Pakistan Super League Season 9. On the other hand, Michael Bracewell will lead the New Zealand during their tour of Pakistan. Trent Bolt, Devin Conaway, Lockie Ferguson, Matt Henry, Terrell Mitchell, Glenn Phillips, Rachan Ravindra, Mitchell Santner and Kane Williamson won't feature in the series due to Indian Premier League commitments. Pakistan scored for New Zealand series include Babar Azam, the captain, Abrar Ahmed, Azam Khan, Fakhar Zaman, Tukhar Ahmed, Imad Wasim, Muhammad Abbas Afridi, Muhammad Rizwan, Muhammad Amir, Irfan Khan, Naseem Shah, Saima Yub, Shadab Khan, Shaheen Afridi, Usman Khan, Zaman Khan, and Osama Mir. New Zealand T20 international squad include Michael Bracewell, the captain, Finn Allen, Mark Chapman, Josh Clarkson, Jacob Duffy, Dean Foxcroft, Ben Lister, Cole McConey, Adam Milne, Jimmy Nisham, Willow Rue, Tim Robinson, Ben Sears, Tim Seifert, Ish Soti. The first match marking the start of the event will be held in Rubble Pindi Cricket Stadium on the 18th of April. Pakistan. Well, there you have it, and you, you know, but just during that package, we're discussing some of the positives that each of the players who have been given the maiden call ups to the Pakistan side would be uh, showcasing as well. But then again, there's also, uh, I think, the chapter where uh, Mohammad Amir and Imad Wasim make a return to international cricket. And I think that is something also that needs to be deliberated upon. But uh, I think the approach, Usman, is something that is very necessary. If you look at this Pakistan squad, just recently they were put to the test. Uh, in a, uh, you know, a training camp at the Pakistan Military Academy in Kakul. Uh, there was a rigorous camp, a rigorous training took place. We all saw videos of those as well uh, to get the players accustomed to the art of tra training and fitness which was missing for Pakistan for the past two years. Now I think it comes down to uh, this series as well because if we look before the World Cup, Pakistan, this series becomes very important if you want to make up a T20 squad based on results that players are giving. See, you are asking questions all the time. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> what is the criteria to get into the Pakistan site? Hmm. If it's a million dollar question, I'm sure. If you're asking me a very simple criteria, <laughs> that if you are uh, performing well in Pakistan Super League and uh, uh, if, if your franchise uh, have a good influence over the Pakistan cricket board and if you have scored 50s or centuries, simply just come to the Pakistan cricket team, play and then nobody will know you after a couple of months that who you are well i think a good 30 
or a good three wickets <laughs> in T20 cricket. So far, that seems to be there. Because unfortunately, I think what we started from, uh, I think even from before Ramadan, all the way up till now post Eid is the same again. And I think that is almost become, I think, part and parcel of our show is that the number of first class, uh, first class games minimum for a player to make an international debut. So I think that is, that is the real million dollar question that stays there. But we've also been joined by senior sports journalist Sayed Haider. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Welcome to Sports Extra. Walaikum salam, Ahmed. Thank you very much. Sir, great to have you on the show. Sir, what would you like to add about the home series as well? Like we say that people are skeptical about New Zealand sending a, a squad that is not their full strength, but they're trying new combinations for the future and T20 World Cup. Pakistan, uh, probably I think uh, on the paper side, we might think that we're trying to approach a future scenario. But how much can we plan for the future ahead is the real question. Yeah, that is true. Uh, that uh, uh, New Zealand, they are making their squad for the future uh, World Cup and other events. But Pakistan is looking only to get a strong team and Babar Azim is the captain of the side and all, all the players, all the strong players, they are in the side. I think it was the best opportunity for the Pakistan cricket board to get some new players, new young comers, uh, the performers of the domestic circuit and PSNL, uh, 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 everything, they could be they could be tested in this series. But uh, I don't know why the PCB management selection committee and every everyone they are going with the all the strong players. They should go with the young players. And uh, if the young players they can do something against uh, this New Zealand B team or C team, then it means that uh, they are available for the international level. Uh, anytime if a team is A or B or C level, but if an, any international match, then the competition is between the both teams. This is not a question that how the strong the opponent, but the question is that how we are preparing us for the uh, big events, World Cup and other other things. So this is the question to the PCP, why they are going with the, all the strong team players and uh, they are putting all the efforts in this series. Afterward, they are they, ha they have one series against Ireland and then England, and then they will go to the US and West Indies. So this is the best opportunity. I think if they are not utilizing this one, then it will it will be really, it's a bad luck for us. Mm -hmm. I think uh, clinically, uh, performances were put to uh, a sort of a scenario where we were gauging performance-based indicators, but obviously after the Pakistan Super League, things change. And now we've, but Usman, you'd like to add to that argument as well. Yeah, I asked that question. Uh, that was a million dollar question mm. and you people explained it really well. Mm. <laughs> uh, my point of view was simply because uh, you talk about uh, domestic cricket, you talk about uh, players coming from Pakistan from the grassroots level. Uh, over e over and over again, we have seen that these things don't happen in mm -hmm. Pakistan. And uh, as Kiyas have put it, rightly so, that uh, you need to perform well in a franchise and then there would be influence from there and then some political influence and some from the PCB and then things and then you, there might be some choices from the PCB chairman as well and suddenly you are into the side. You have brought back Muhammad Amir, you have brought back Maad Wasim, you have brought back Usman Khan. Okay, I can tr we can talk about Usman Khan that suddenly he performed really well and everybody was oozing about him and there was a lot of uh, positivity around him and he, he came into the side. Okay, we can talk about that. But why did Imad and Muhammad Amar come into the side? This is an extremely short term approach, extremely short term approach, probably until June. And after June, if these two, three players don't perform well, I don't know where they see their career. Mm -hmm. uh, at least for Amir and Imad, we can talk about that they have been playing uh, freelance cricket, cricket and they have been doing that all along for the past few years and there was no fitness test for them, there was nothing, there was no criteria for them, just that they played a couple of good matches in the PSL and they won the they won the tournament, Imad won that tournament and he came straight back into the side and everybody was pleading that he should be in the side all of a sudden. So what about the players who have kept up with their uh, uh, domestic cricket, they have kept mm -hmm. up with their fitness and they have been doing everything uh, for the contract and to be into the Pakistan side, this message hasn't done anything great for them. That is my first point. Talking about uh, New Zealand's BCD team coming to Pakistan, uh, you all are appreciating them. Uh, you have your own opinion. My opinion is slightly different. I think they have brought in their BCD team not to develop players. Rather, many of their players are playing in IPL and they did not want it to come. And there was an understanding between the board and the players as well. Mm -hmm. Kane Williamson is an example. Uh, Trent Bolt doesn't have a contract yet. When the World Cup comes on the horizon, he is in the side. 
So these things are, are happening in the other both as well. So everything they do is not good and everything we do is not bad. Talking about Pakistan cricket team, see, if once you have brought Babar Azam back as captain, uh, we all know how he was going to approach things. He always wants to have his group of players in the side. And once he came back, there was an understanding that he would be far more powerful than before. So you have to get along with the, the season of Babar Azam. And that is what he does. He wants his playing 11 to be on the paper and on the field. And so he can lead the team. And with just the World Cup one, one and a half month away, I think it's a good approach playing your best playing 15 in the squad because you mm -hmm. know you have to have a clear idea that which player is going to perform which uh, role and so that once you go into the world cup you are far more clear rather than a new zealand side who has half of their players playing the ipl and uh, the rest uh, remaining players have come to pakistan to play a series well it's a very interesting point that Usman mentions asif i'm sure you'll elaborate on that but please i think uh, also add to us and for our viewers that like he mentioned that you know what should be uh, going in the mind of the players like Mohammad Amir and Imad Vaseem, what would they be thinking that we're coming back just to play one World Cup probably? I mean, what are they thinking for the longevity of the game? What do they believe? As a player's perspective, you can probably, uh, you spend a lot of time as a broadcaster, you can probably judge that as well. And second important factor that, you know, uh, Babar Azam's influence as far as selection is concerned. Uh, I would believe that to an extent, but then again, I would have definitely seen Mohammad Haris in the squad as well. So I still think that somewhat, uh, Babar's influence has been curtailed a bit as far as selection is concerned. Well, you talked about the longevity. If the players aren't interested about their fitness and if they're not thinking by, by themselves, I think then, then you cannot only blame on Pakistan Cricket Board. But in the case of Mohammad Amir and uh, uh, Imad Wasim, I think that the Pakistan Cricket Board is directly responsible. And uh, definitely I would put straight away that if Pakistan Cricket Board cannot take bold decisions, once a cricketer said that I won't be available for Pakistan, thank you very much, I'm going, it won't happen in, in, the, in the world. You, you cannot see that it's happening in Australia, mm -hmm. India, England. Once a player said that I, I, I won't be available for the country, then thank you very much. But this is a Pakistan where you know that the lobbying and the influence of the franchise cricket and then of course that uh, your personal contacts, they're really important. Uh, this is what I'm saying on the TV that one of the players, a test cricketer, said to me that uh, i asked him that why you aren't playing in in pakistan team aren't you fit mm -hmm. why you aren't, uh, or you you aren't available he said that i don't do not have good friendship with one of the uh, important that, personality in pakistan directors team. in in, in PC. I, I i don't know i don't want to mention <laughs> but this is very this was shocking for me that a very good player mm -hmm. is not in the side just because he hasn't good friendships mm -hmm. so i think that but I, even, I'm, I'm quite yes. sure that the most of is working on it but even the case if you because you know you've seen that franchise model as because you just talked about fitness and responded as well even the case of asan ul life a franchise owner has to take to social media platforms to announce that they're the one financing the rehab and uh, you know uh, medical expenses of Asanullah, then I mean it's a big question mark what had been happening at the National High Performance Center. Well, how you uh, you're forgetting that what happened with Shaheen Shah mm -hmm. Then when he has sent to UK about his mm -hmm. injury, and Sh uh, Shahid Afridi has tweeted that we didn't give well, he uh, the Pakistan Cricket Board didn't give anything to Shaheen Shah Then uh, Pakistan Cricket Board responded in a press release that no, we are. Uh, taking care each and everything about China, China right? so this is happening and uh, off the camera you have shared something more I don't want to say anything <laughs> about Hassan uh, Hassan Ullah Khan so mm -hmm. I think that of course the way you are working Ahmed your sources uh, see we are working for the betterment of Pakistan cricket we do not have any personal relations we do not have any personal interest the only thing that we want to see that the Pakistan cricket is rising and we should be the world champions and in the in, in all the formats and uh, that, that's the problem. Uh, the question is that once Amir said that I won't be available for Pakistan cricket and Pakistan in, in test we require his services in test cricket and he only went for the franchise cricket that then why you're giving him chance? Mm -hmm. It's a huge question mark on system and same with the Imad. And I would be very interested to know that on what terms and conditions uh, are they making a <laughs> And comeback. I'm quite sure that after a couple of days you will bring <laughs> all these things because you have a very strong context and sources in Pakistan cricket. Well, uh, you know, um, there are more people in this room who are now more uh, <laughs> well connected in the PCB. I won't go, go that way, but let's leave that for off camera. Sir, Heather, uh, three decisions. Uh, if we can elaborate on them as well. Uh, one of them is uh, the return of Mohammad Amir. One is the return of Imad Wasim. And the big one 
is the return of Babar Azam as skipper. Now, all these three decisions basically contradict what the past PCB regimes have done. So that means that PCB have either corrected their own wrongs or have actually taken a stand against their own policies. How would you elaborate that? I think Ahmed, it's only the policies that to reverse all the decisions what they have been taken by the last regime. And now we are the uh, next one, we are the new one. So we have uh, uh, liberty to do something what we want. And they have seen that uh, the last regime, they have ousted Babar Azam from the captaincy and uh, they have not selected Amir, Mohammed Amir and uh, Imad Basim. So they, they did have only the one possibility to get these players back to the, their positions. Otherwise, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what, what is the criteria of the selection of Mohammed Amir. Mohammed Amir, I, I haven't seen in the last one any good performance from him. In PSL, he was not successful. And domestic, he's not playing. Uh, uh, other leagues, I, have, I haven't seen anything uh, which is the special for the to back into the Pakistan team. Imad Basim, you can say in PSL three finals, and he has got all the three finals, man of the match, and played vital innings in the batting. So uh, maybe the Imad Basim is uh, is the right selection for the Pakistan team. But Mohammad Abir, I'm not hundred uh, percent. I'm not agree with the Mohammad Abir. He doesn't have any space in the team. Where you will select him? If you want to select Mohammed Amir in the team, then you have to kick out Shaheen Shah Afridi. So if your prime bowler, Shaheen Shah Afridi, is not in the team and you are getting a bowler who is not playing for the last four years for the Pakistan team, so what would be the combination in the, your Pakistan team? Because Shaheen Shah, Naseem Shah and Haris Rao, it is a very good trio, very good triangle of the Pakistan fast bowling. If you are... If you are deselecting uh, anyone of from them, then it means that you are going to disturb your triangle. Your your disturb. You are going to disturb your fast bowling. Okay, Haris Rov is not fit as they are saying that, but I don't believe that Haris Rov. For he was always bowler for the four overs, and still he is the bowler of the four overs. He can do it in every match. But if you are going to make some changes only due to last regime, then it means that the team is not your purpose. Team is not your aim object, but it is your object is only to make something because you are here. I think it's not good for any yeah, where any time. Choices, aren't you? If, I, if like you mentioned as well, if I was to select a playing eleven based on merit, and if I was Babar Azam or what Chairman PCB said that the best playing eleven or, or decisions would be taken on merit, let's to elaborate on that. Then primarily Mohammad Amir plays because there is no chance that he's been given a green light to come back to Pakistan cricket without the assurance of not playing. So Amir becomes automatic selection. You have to play Shine Shah Afridi. You have to play Naseem Shah. Now the ball rests in the court of Babar Azam because on one end you've got Zaman Khan who's been rated as a death baller specialist. Uh, and on the other end you have uh, a not so fit Haris Rauf who has really been struggling. So I think now it, it becomes a very tricky subject and also Usama Mir becoming the highest wicket taker of your franchise tournament and then on the other end you've got Shadab Khan who is also an automatic selection. Yeah, uh, you know, what is the benefit, what is the advantage for the uh, newcomers that they are going to play against a weaker side? Amir could be, uh, he can get the wickets against the New Zealand and then it will be a reason to get him in the World Cup squad. Th this is the problem and I would say that uh, this is the management committee, what it, it is going with the Babar Azam uh, uh, in the team. It is not good for, for the Babar Azam because they are the selectors, they are the coaches, they are all the time, they are imposed on the Babar Azam. Babar, Babar Azam is uh, like, uh, such like a person who has ability to get the decision by himself. He's, he has confidence. He is a, one of the best batsmen in the world. So he has some good confidence than all other captains what we have got in the last four or five years in Pakistan team. So I think it, it, will, be, it will be a conflict between Babar Azam and the selectors because selectors are running with the team. They, I, I haven't seen in any other team that in, a, in any other country that the selectors are running with the team. Only in the Pakistan, the selectors, they are also the batting or bowling coaches. So this is not good for the Pakistan cricket. I think they have to do something better for the Pakistan cricket and they have to do something with the combination of the uh, uh, captain Babar Azam. Otherwise, it will not, it will not work uh, really for Pakistan cricket.
Absolutely, and I've also learned the terminologies mm. of a manager and a senior manager just ah. to keep <laughs> the house in order as well. I think it's, it's just to keep an eye on the boys, what they're doing and what they're not. Asif, if you'd like to add something. Uh, well, uh, a question for all of you, mm. and especially from um, Heather Bhai. The, as he said, that the selectors are the coaches. Now the selectors, as you mentioned, they're the senior manager as well, <laughs> the new term in Pakistan cricket. Mm. Uh, thank you very much for the new management, that what they are doing. The question about Harris Rove, that uh, after playing 66 uh, T20 internationals, the economy is over eight, not performing well. The recent uh, ODI World Cup, uh, he was his, his performance was extremely bad. Even then, if we aren't sure about his future, then what would be the rest of the ballers? Then mm. uh, that's why I think this is what Pakistan Grid Board is thinking. Because uh, I'm quite sure that the Harris Rove will play for, for T20 World Cup. Mm. Either he's fit or not, That be, because Akib Jawed wants it. And th that, that, that's the decision from the Akib Javed and the Lahore Kalanda. He's going to be more worried about Sri Lanka cricket now than Pakistan cricket. Well, I'm, not, so. I'm not sure. That. <laughs> the, the, the talking about the Sri Lankan cricket, he must be eyeing on the Harris Rao, what he's doing. <laughs> because this is his product. And, uh, uh, and, and, and this is what I wanted to ask you guys. That What would you say about well, Harris Rao? Uh, yes, Usman. What, what would you like to say about Harris Rao? And primarily the fact, like I mentioned, that Amir is a must, play, uh, must in the playing eleven. Shine Afri is must playing because at this moment you can't afford to bench him. It's going to be a crossfire all over with removing him from captaincy. Zaman Khan, Haris Rauf, you've got Wasim Jr. in there as well. Hassan Ali's been terrific. Uh, if you look at the you know trajectory as well of uh, improving, uh, a lot of options as far as fast bowling. So one of we people sitting here are doing one of the toughest job in the world. That is <laughs> analyzing Pakistan cricket. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very difficult to say what uh, they are up to. But I, I think uh, what Kasif is saying is absolutely right. I think uh, uh, Harris is going to be uh, in the playing 11. He's going to play the World Cup. And I think uh, what Amir brings to the table for Pakistan cricket is he has one thing which the other bowlers don't usually have, is that neither uh, Sh uh, Shaheen Shafridi, if the ball is swinging, is outstanding. But if the ball is not swinging, uh, Amir becomes very important in the first six overs. Apart from that, I don't think Amir is going to bring anything new to this Pakistan side. Uh, you have an Asim Shah who can ball at any stage of the game. You have Haris Rauf for middle and the death over. He's not a new ball baller. Shain Shafridi is good for opening and middle over bowling, not in the death over. So Amir is probably, I, I, that is my opinion, I think he's the fourth choice baller. He's not in the, uh, the first three. Uh, but that is how it is. But uh, again, what you said is that if he doesn't have the guarantee of being in the playing 11, it becomes difficult why Amir has uh, presented himself for the Pakistan playing for the Pakistan team because I think this is the only World Cup that he's going to feature in. He won't be around the Pakistan cricket team in the next one or two years' time. So we have to have our fingers crossed and we have to see. But as far as Imad Wasim is concerned, I think that is going to be a match off between him and Shadab Khan. And that could be a very, very interesting and win-win situation for Pakistan team. Coming to what Hassan Bhai was talking about, uh, Amir playing against uh, this New Zealand side and picking up wickets, that is what exactly my point was, that if you are playing some new players for the sake of playing them and if they do one or two good games, then it becomes a problem for the Pakistan team, especially with the uh, media hounding these captains and this management. So that is why I was of the opinion that Pakistan should be playing its best playing 11. Uh, one or two chopping and changes, uh, but the centre, the core of the team should be the same. Absolutely. And interestingly, I think there's another debate going on of who's going to share the new ball now. How are you going to adjust your bowlers? Because even, you know, if you're playing Imad, his success rate has mostly been with the new ball. That, that is another interesting <laughs> argument. Amir, if he takes it, then you move Shaheen down the order. If Shaheen takes it, then Amir needs to ball in the first. And what about Naseem Shah? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 he will ball the new ball. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would like to add something. Hmm, yes. Uh, see, uh, we were talking uh, about that. Uh, what was the criteria to bring this Amir and Imad Wasim and all that? I can uh, vouch for them in one uh, thing is that this World Cup is going to take place in the West Indies and they have a very good record in West Indies. In the CPL they have been playing, Azam Khan has been playing, Imad has been playing, Amir has been doing well. Uh, Imad is probably one of the finest as mm -hmm. far as uh, bowling all-rounder, spin bowling all-rounder is concerned. And Azam Khan has been doing really well. I, th I think he was he's a champion this time around as well. So these are some of the things that has gone in their favour just because they were playing franchise cricket and they were not contracted to Pakistan cricket. So what message has
advantage has PCB given to the rest of the players is that probably you shouldn't be going and vying for the Pakistan central contract. You should be trying your uh, trade in the franchise cricket and playing the big bash, playing the 100, playing the CPL, playing the IPL, playing the PSL. And once the World Cup takes place in a, a, either of these countries, your record from that uh, T20 uh, franchise would be taken. And if you have been doing well, do hell with the players playing domestic cricket, you would mm -hmm. be an automatic choice. Absolutely. Delete one. one name. Uh, you have taken a couple of names, mm -hmm. several names, uh, CPL and Big Bash. Please don't take about don't take name the IPL because I, 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 <laughs> I have taken it deliberately I can vouch for that as well because Amir now being uh, uh, eligible to play as an English player uh, will be eligible to play IPL as well well I think it's another debate uh, well, obviously yeah. and but but but, but that know, was sarcastic yes, comment. But, but because <laughs> I think because the you know my panelists have talked about the uh, policy of performing uh, around the world in various uh, leagues and then automatically impressing the selectors in Pakistan. I think because Sir Heather is listening, I should be thinking of going to Germany and performing there. And you never know. <laughs> with the amount of success I can achieve there and impressing the selectors, at least for franchise cricket in Pakistan. But Sir Heather, we all remember that famous line of Nasir Hussain. He said, a Pakistan cricket team, one minute down, next minute up. But I think at the same time, that line should also be uh, implemented or should also be a jargon for the... Uh, people hoping to play cricket in Pakistan as well for the Pakistan team. So even a player can say that one minute in the team, one minute out of the team, <laughs> next minute again back in the team. So, you know, anything goes as far as the selection is concerned. Yeah, ultimately, Pakistan cricket is just like uh, England's weather. One day you have <laughs> having rain and next hour you are, you are having sun. So Pakistan cricket team, really, it's uh, very, uh, I think consistency is not a word in our system. We are. We believe only that uh, what we have in our front of eyes, we, we we will pick up it. And otherwise, what the people have done in the past or they can do in the future, it is not a uh, matter. Um, Pakistan cricket, you know, in the last two three years, we have played a lot of matches against the weaker side. So we have got the runs, but the winning. Uh, percentage is not so good like sh it should be like the our batters and bowlers are doing but it's it's not good it means that uh, someone they are doing only individual performances otherwise the team uh, team combination is not working in the world cup in india we have seen in uh, australia we have seen and now the big one it's coming in uh, western east and usa uh, in western you know the pitches are not like uh, uh, Australia or uh, uh, England, there you have to struggle uh, too much. The bowlers, they have to struggle there in, uh, in West Indies. So it will be a very uh, big exa exam of the uh, Pakistani bowlers in West Indies and also the captaincy because Babar Azam is, is going with uh, after a pause of the captaincy. For, he he was captain in the World Cup and then three, four months he was out of the captaincy. So it's a pause and we have to see how he will react. In the, against the New Zealand series, home series, you cannot count anything because it's not a strong team. So what Pakistan will do, it's not to, it, it will not help us in the in the World Cup and other, other events. But uh, our ex uh, first test will be in England and then the, in West Indies and USA. I can pray for the Pakistan cricket team that they should combine and they should do something. What they can do, they have they are talented. They have talent, but the question is that how they will implement because the management is giving other going in other side and players going in another side so if pakistan cricket just like uh, just like a v where they are seeking their goal what they have to do absolutely and i think i'll leave it at that because that opens up a uh, another debate in Pakistan <laughs> cricket, but I think over the pa over next week to come as well, we're going to be discussing all of these nitty-gritty things and also analysing the cricket itself as well, uh, because obviously these activities at the end of the day are linked to performances and our indicators as well. But Sir Heather, thank you very much for joining us. Kiasif, thank you to you. Malik Usman, always a pleasure having you on the show as well. That wraps up Sports Extra from me and my entire team. It's goodbye for now.